Thank you. Uh, Ms. Williams, uh, Mr. Ken, our Chairman Ken Jorsky and I, uh, part of our request to you is to determine whether there had been any measurable progress in recouping uh, the taxpayer dollars. Uh, have you seen anything, any optimistic signs or positive signs? And one of the things I will ask you in that question, uh, or you can choose to use this or not, but in the Fed's special purpose vehicle, Maiden Lane, mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that those assets or those contracts and credit default swaps may be performing at least uh, apparently at a higher level than, than when they were acquired. But would you comment on, on the broader question and maybe that detailed question? Um, in our work in this area is going on um, and on an ongoing basis. In terms of the status, we looked at where they are and we noted the challenges. And that's kind of, at this point, we see a number of challenges that AIG continues to face in terms of restructuring itself. So, you know, I would say at this point we're kind of neutral until we continue to do some more work in terms of the outlook. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Uh, Polakoff, uh, you acknowledge that uh, I believe that you were somewhat aware of the worsening situations at the financial products subsidiary, uh, but uh, you you would I think admit that OTS didn't foresee the extent of the risk to AIG. Is that correct? We did, yes, sir. We did not foresee the extent that the uh, mortgage market would deteriorate and the impact on the liquidity of AIGFP. Did you um, did you understand the complicated use of the credit default swaps? Did you and the exposure that they uh, they were creating for the company? The amount of risk was there an appreciation of that? Yes, sir, absolutely. We reviewed the models. Uh, we understood the models. We worked with the external auditors. We worked with the uh, senior management of the company. Uh, again, the models were accurate in predicting that the actual realized credit loss on the underlying CDOs was minimal, and it, it remains minimal as of today. It was the liquidity aspect that the models failed, and we failed to identify that aspect. Was that... Uh did you lack qualified examiners, or is that an impossible task? No, it's quite possible. I'm very proud of the work our examiners did. Again, in, in 2004, we failed to predict how bad things would get in 2008. All right. um, have you revised your examinations to, of course, y a yes, lot sir. of that liquidity has been unwound now, so I guess it's a... Yes, sir, and, and this is not the only company that suffered liquidity crises, and, and from the Basel Committee on down, all of the regulators have focused on the proper review of liquidity. Um, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ario, is that how you pronounce it? That's correct. Uh, there's been, uh, you know, some call by some, you know, to create a uh, optional federal charter. Uh, but at least as I've seen it, uh, I've not seen much failure of state regulation of the insurance industry. Uh, would you uh, comment on what type, what need of reform maybe the insurance reform ought to be and where that ought to come from? Is there a gap in the regulatory structure? Is there failure of federal regulation or, is, or state regulation? Uh, thank you for that, that question. I, I certainly agree with you that there hasn't been a failure of the state system here. In fact, we are the success story within this overall story in that the insurance companies continue to remain uh, strong, stable, well-capitalized uh, companies, and, and they are the most likely route that the taxpayer will get paid back here is the value in those uh, insurance companies. There are, on an ongoing basis, many uh, modernization initiatives that we're involved in. The, the world changes fast. Uh, these days, and so we're updating our financial regulation, taking into account some of the issues on securities lending. Uh, I do agree with my colleague here, Mr. Polakoff, that uh, the same things to on securities lending. It was liquidity issues that caused the problem, not losses in the underlying value. Um, so, but we're looking at that issue. We're looking at modernizing our product speed to market systems, our producer licensing systems, and so forth. But there is nothing in a systemic nature, I think, that we have to do other than be partners as part of a 
national systemic risk system that protects the functional regulators within an overall collaborative system. Have you looked at the overall holding company at AIG in doing your assessments of, of the insurance company, or do you deal solely with the insurance operations? We deal primarily with the insurance company. Certainly when we have questions, we kick them up to the holding uh, company level. Um, so the securities lending was actually handled at the holding company level. When we have those kind of questions then about how is it being handled there because it has it's using money from the uh, life insurance companies. Uh, we generally get answers to those questions. But there is a hole there where if uh, we pressed real hard on some sensitive topics, we don't have clear authority to go into the holding company level. And so I do think you need somebody that's got clear authority at that holding company level uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we'll hear 